Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to this week's association chat. This is your weekly online discussion for the association community where we warm ourselves by the virtual fire with the topics of the day, welcoming thought leaders and trailblazers alike to join up in this online home for the community. I'm your host, Kiki Latalien, CEO of Amplify Growth Digital Marketing and longtime host of this weekly chat that's been around since 2009 on Twitter, Blab and now huzzah, huzzah. So it seems like everyone is talking about mindfulness and business and incorporating meditation and exercise. And we're using apps like Headspace and we're trying to remember to be grateful while also navigating this, the day to day stressors that we all face, like scheduling meetings and writing reports and and optimizing communication in addition to managing our families, our home lives, um, and professional development. And it is so overwhelming. So my guests today are no strangers to these complications, as we all are, are very familiar with these complications, but, but um, they may even have some ideas to share with how to navigate um, these types of issues. And the three of us are presenting a session at ASAE Annual called From Panic to Productive, How to Lighten Your Load While Getting Your Arm On, which is, we hope, going to be a lot of fun and practi practical for uh, a number of people. Now, Cynthia Damore, if you're not familiar with Cynthia, she has worked with association leaders and staff to get more members involved using marketing savvy leadership and marketing savvy leadership approach for over 20 years. She is a frequent speaker at leadership conferences and conventions, and she adds a lot of can do high energy fun to the events. And I I know this. I can testify to this. This is true. <laughs> Thanks, Kiki. Yes. Scott Oster, he also comes with over 20 years of experience in the association and publishing industries, focusing on marketing with a, a special kind of savvy in developing, implementing, and analyzing multi-channel direct marketing programs. He also speaks at many conferences and events. And I should mention also that both Cynthia and Scott publish articles frequently in all kinds of online publications and print publications. And Cynthia herself, she's writ written seven books. And I think she's working on your, are you working on your eighth now? Mm -hmm. Is that yep, right? Number eight. Yeah, number lucky number eight. <laughs> yeah. uh, so with all of that said, uh, today's chat is not a copy of what we're doing in Salt Lake City. I don't want anyone to think that it is, but it is a chance for us to chat with all of you about uh, some of the philosophies, the habits, and the questions surrounding this topic. It's also a chance for us to maybe go into a little bit more detail, a little bit more depth um, on some of our experiences, some of the tricks that we you know, are not going to include in our presentation but are important to share. So uh, to kick everything off, and I'm so glad everyone's here. Um, I also, also by the way, uh, on using the hashtag AssenChat, using the hashtag AssenChat on Twitter, I have posted, scheduled some questions uh, to go out. So if you want to also check uh, your Twitter feed, if you're watching this live, you might see some people responding to those questions as we go along. All right. Okay, so for Scott and Cynthia, you guys, do you think professionals are showing more of an interest in areas like meditation, yoga, journaling, things like this lately? And if so, why? Cynthia, you want to take first shot or you want me to go? Go for it. Um, I think that professionals i just i think honestly the world in general is starting to get more interested in these types of practices um i i don't think it's just professionals i think it's it's just people really that are now starting to get used to this i think that we live in such a high stress high pressure world all the time that as this is becoming i guess you could say more accepted in society at least in the American society, almost more than anywhere else, because obviously a lot of this comes from Asian society, Asian communities, where they've been doing this forever and ever and ever. Um, 
but I think as it's becoming more accepted here, people are getting more and more interested in it. They're using it more because the whole idea, at least for me, is to slow my brain down, to slow my life down. And this is one way to do it. I, you know, I will be the first one to tell you when I first started meditating and doing my gratitude journal and everything else, it was hard and my brain was running all over the place. Um, but now that I've been doing it for a while, I do realize that it just it helps you down. It, gives, it slows you down. It gives you that peace of mind that you need so that you're not running at 110 miles an hour every minute of every day. And I think that's important for us as people. I think it's important for us as professionals. You can't just go, 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 go all the time or else you're going to stress yourself out and, and have a nervous breakdown at some point. Um, and for me, you know, the military now is teaching meditation. Mm. So you can't go much more ma mainstream than, you know, when the Army and the Navy and those people are all doing meditation. It's like not weird anymore. Yeah. Um, although, interestingly, when I do programs on meditation, and but I'm not doing leadership, I've been doing meditation programs, I'll have a room full of people who've never tried it. And so there's a ton of curiosity out there about what is this about? How does mm. it work? Um, they don't know. A lot of people have misconceptions about it. So, so it's something that I see as being very sexy, mm -hmm. like, Ooh, I, you know, well, tell me more. And yet they're, they're thinking I've got to sit, you know, for an hour, you know, and, uh, you know, whatever. And so, um, that's been an interesting thing to notice in the groups I've been working with. Yeah, you know, it's funny because uh, we had someone on Twitter who responded, yes, the more we're bombarded with stuff, the more we need to shed stress. And I, you know, I do think that it's true. Oh, hey, Sue, I was just talking about your tweet there. Um, that, that, you know, it's very interesting because I think that it's no surprise that we have, everyone's looking for the vacations where they can unplug. There are actually places where they require you to turn everything in so that you can unplug. So of course, I think that it's natural that as we are not just over, like we're so busy and we have so much that we're trying to keep on top of, um, that we're looking for some sort of way to manage that stress and to, to make things a little bit more even keel for us um, as human beings, right? So. Well, and I think there's a big addiction to it too, Kiki. Um, when I started blogging and I went on my, I started blogging, when I went on my 30 Days of Joy um, blogging campaign mm -hmm. and I started first blogging, starting about, I wanted to focus on joy every day. I was going to add more joy in my life, which is very, you know, simpatico with this. I was getting people writing to me saying, who do you think you are that you can be joyful every day? Do you really think you have time to unwind like that? And so <laughs> I actually noticed that a lot of us, we're like addicted to the crazy business, busy stuff and we brag about it. You know, you don't go into yeah. cocktail parties and say, well, I just had the best meditation and I'm like, so in the space, it's like, I did this and I did that. And what'd you do? Right, right, right. We're supposed to, we're supposed to be able to do, to have the Tim Ferriss for our work week dream and be sailing and be learning jujitsu and like all of these things while uh, somehow being able to do all of our work at the same time. It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy. But, you know, I love that um, over here on the side, we have, uh, you know, Karen, who's getting ready to go on a sailboat for five days in a couple of weeks. And she can't wait to have her phone off, which I'm very, very jealous of. But, you know, it's like we, we do. I think that we naturally have to have something, anything that is going to allow us to to learn how to de-stress and to, but at the same time, be productive. I mean, how do we, how do we handle this onslaught of stuff that we're supposed to be responsible for without completely breaking down at some point? And I think that that's kind of, you know, what's driving a lot of interest into this, but also why we put this session together. Cause I know that each one of us has been exploring this and investigating it and um, talking about it in, in different types of ways, whether it has to be with like, wh whether you manage it with technology or new practices. And so what do you do? What do each of you do right now to bring more balance to your life? Um, and then after that, I have a follow-up question for that, but I'll, I'll let you start with that. So Cynthia, what, what do you do right now to bring more balance to your life? 
my um, <clears throat> my thing has really been I've kept up the joy practice now for several months, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I actually have on my phone I set up little alarms that go off throughout the day asking me questions about joy. And this is something that's just so simple, but it's like, are you as joyful as you could be right now? You know, <laughs> do you feel joyful? And even though I can be slams, you know, and up to my eyeballs with alligators, it just is that pause thing that, oh, wait, do I feel joy? And then I can go into, and I've trained myself, I can do very fast meditation and a matter of seconds to get back into space. And mm -hmm. then when I get into the space, then I can work faster. So things become less stressful and it's just a really lovely upward spiral. Wow. Yeah. How about you, Scott? I mean, I think one of the things that I really did um, when I first started meditating, as I was saying before, I struggled like crazy. I put so much pressure on myself to do it right, to do it for a certain period of time, to clear my mind, to do all of that stuff. And and honestly, what it did, what it, it stressed me out more. <laughs> yeah. It was like, all right, I've got, I've got all these things to do, and now I've got to find 15 or 20 minutes to do something. And if I'm going to do it, I'm doing it right. I'm not just kind of half, you know, the second half of that word. But I'm not just kind of doing it halfway. I'm going all the way. So I think one of the biggest things that I did was give myself, was read about it, was learn about it, and then give my permission and say, all right, you know what? You may not get to this every single day. You, you may not have, there's going to be periods of time where you're not going to get to it every single day. And there are going to be periods of time where you're meditating. You got 10 minutes or you got five minutes and your mind's going to wander and you're going to do all those things. And I think once you sort of free yourself a little bit to be able to do that and look at it that way, it's much different. And you just kind of get out of it and you're like, wow, that was really five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And that you're just all to yourself. And one of the other things that I have really, really tried to focus on, because I would go to bed, I still go to bed with my phone mm -hmm. next to my bed. I wake up naturally with my phone right next to my bed. So, you know, I wake, I go to bed with emails sitting there and I wake up with emails sitting there. So one of the things that, I, that I've started doing is I've started making sure to check my last email a certain amount of time before I go to sleep so that I'm not checking it literally right before I try to go to bed. And then I actually do, I meditate and do my gratitude journal and those kind of things before I check email in the morning. So my phone's still there. I just move around the room a little bit and do what I got to do. So that way I get that stuff out of the way. So then the rest of the day I have to do what I need to do. And instead of just, I mean, I literally used to go to bed, wake up, jump right out of bed, jump right into work. And no. you can't live like that. So welcome to life. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There are certain yeah. things I've like really set up my life so that I have certain things that help me to have more energy and more joy in my life on a, on a daily basis. And I, I've discovered that if I, if I don't have them, I miss, I, I miss them and quickly, like I, I discover I have less energy. I discover I'm uh, not as happy and, and I, and not as productive. And those things, um, for me, they include like, I have to get up and I have to exercise, move, sweat in some way. I have to, um, I, I have to get connected and, you know, like whether you, it's prayer or meditation, I have to just be quiet and focus on, you know, what my intentions are for the day. And, um, you know, and be mindful of what I am grateful for. And, and then at the end of the day, I always, I have this great app um, that, you know, I think they're just available. The one that I use is just available for, for Apple devices, but um, it's called gratitude. And you just write things that you're grateful for. And I try to always do three, at least three. And those, that combination has been like magic for me. Um, over time. But, you know, it's, it is interesting. And I know we've, we've all talked about this, but, but I think that, that, that physical aspect, I'm not necessarily naturally athletic. So I think that, um, you know, I am now, you know, like <laughs> He says the woman who just did what? Yeah. Is it a marathon? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, you know, most of my life, most of my life, I've shunned exercise and all kinds of stuff like that. And now it's like every day. Right. And, and the difference has been pretty significant, but also being grateful at the end of the day, I need, I need each piece for me. That's what I need. So I've been, Oh, sorry. Well, he, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Karen had asked about mm -hmm. gratitude journals. So, um, 
I didn't catch the name of the one that you're using. I mean, I'm using an app called Bliss. It's free. And the thing that's kind of cool, I just found, I literally just Googled like gratitude journal on, and I use a droid. So I'm assuming it's there on, on Apple too, but it's really kind of cool because you can pick and choose like different categories. It's not just like Kiki, it sounds like what you're doing is truly, I am grateful for, which I think has yeah. a lot of value. But it's other things too. It's like professional situations. It's like dealing with trouble, troublesome people. It's like all of these different things. And then you can actually set up. I set up. Um, I actually set up one for each day of the week. And I just found that it was too much and it was just too much. Um, but you can pick a different category and it pings you. You set a time. Like so, I had it pinging me and reminding me at eight o'clock every morning to do this, do this, do this, do this. So it gives you that reminder to do it. Um, and Karen, that's basically all it is, is I mean, one of them, the gratitude one is just, you know, you write down, I am grateful for, and you write down what yeah. you're grateful for. And it's the whole idea of putting you in that mindset of positivity versus negativity. You know, it's, it's that whole mind flip. I mean, I, sometimes I still am, but I definitely used to be a very glasses half empty kind of person. So I was always looking at it from that direction. And then I found, you know, that just thinking about things in a much positive, more positive outlook and looking at things I could be grateful for as opposed to things that I can complain about makes such a huge oh, yeah. difference. I had a um, blog reader. I was going through some rough time in a blog about it, on my joy blog. And uh, one of my readers was sharing that she does a um, once a day, she'll write like the gratitude thing on a piece of paper. Like, what am I so grateful for today? Then she puts it in a jar. Mm -hmm. And so when she has bad days, she physically pulls some of the things out to remember all the good in her life. Oh, I love and that. I love that. Yeah, so just one a day. And then at the end of the year, they have an end of the year ceremony and they read some of their gratitudes from the year. And it just, it sounds like a really beautiful like tradition she has in her family. And yeah. I like the physicalness of it because I'm still, um, as much as I love technology, the idea of having like colorful pieces of paper with you see tidbits on them, just like it feels to me. <laughs> well, you know, and that's like this gratitude app that that I use. Um, it, what I like about that, it's the same kind of concept, except it's, it doesn't have the physical. I love the fact that it's a tactile. You can pull something out of a jar, and it's like a jar of awesome. But, but, um, but this gratitude app allows you to take pictures or to post pictures of things mm. that make you that you're grateful for. And, um, there's somewhere, and I don't, I don't have that with me here, but I did read that there was this, this research that came out that shows that images of things that bring you joy actually can elevate your serotonin, um, mm -hmm. in your body. And, and it actually like, there's a chemical balance and it makes you happier. It makes you, and it makes sense that it would do that. But what I like is that I, I started tracking this stuff. I started not tracking, but like just collecting it and adding it in there. And whenever things get really bad, which, you know, honestly, we won't get into politics, but, but let's just say that like, there's been a lot of like news out there. That's just, I don't know, you know, it feels like no one's winning. Right. And so it uh, can get very negative. And I've been relying on a lot of this stuff lately to, I've been fighting, I've been posting more, more things that I'm thankful for mm -hmm. and more things that bring me joy um, than ever before. And because I feel like that's, I have to, like, it's the only way that I can just move past this craziness, you know? Do any of you play the gratitude game? What's the gratitude game? We can play that if you want to play um, it. Oh no. <laughs> and everyone who's on the chat can play too. So yeah. James and I play this sometimes when we get in those moments where we're like both in pissy moods or less up than what we want to be. And the gratitude game is that you keep giving gratitude. So you go back and forth. I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for, and just keep going around. So we're going to play it a couple rounds. We're going to go in a circle with the three of us. And those of you who are on chat, I'm going to challenge all of you. I want one or two gratitudes right now from you. Some people are like, yeah. it's hard to find gratitudes. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. We can find tons of gratitudes. So yeah. we are going to do like any just little examples of playing the gratitude game. And let's check the energy, how we felt after Kiki talked about all the crazy stuff in the world. And yeah. now we're going to play the gratitude game. We can periodically read ones too. So I am grateful for today because I get to hang out with fabulous people who are talking about one of my favorite topics and it just gets me zinging with excitement. Kiki, how about you? 
I'm grateful today because I have this awesome cup warmer that plugs in next to my computer and it keeps my coffee perfectly piping hot all the time. Scott, your turn. <laughs> um, I, the first thing that popped into my head is I'm grateful for my kids because I have not, <clears throat> I have not seen them in about two weeks because they've been on Aww. vacation. So Aww. they're, they're on my mind all the time. At this yes. Point. Yay. Yes. I am grateful for my dogs because I have two adorable dogs who love me no matter what I say to them. And they think I am adorable even when I wake up with morning breath. Kiki. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the question is, do they have worse? But are breath? they grateful? I have a feeling they're going to have the same <laughs> That's take calls. We're doing gratitude, so we don't care about the other people. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I love this one over here on this side. Grateful for my newborn baby who is three months old next week. Oh, oh. grateful for my kitty. Grateful, grateful for coffee. Grateful for the word Ziggy. This is awesome. And I do, like, the energy level. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. Doesn't it? I do. I mean, how can you not feel better? Well, right? and when James and I play this, we go back and forth with just the two of us, but you could do this in a team at work and just do, what are you grateful for? You could do this, you know, any place with your kids. I've got some friends that I've got them, their kids playing it with them. And you just go around a few times and you can just watch the energy spiral up and up and up. And we've gone and played it, like James and I played it for like 10, 15 minutes. And it's like, yeah. you need a kite string to wow. hang on to us. Because like we give it to the dogs to keep us grounded because we're like flying around just like so, oh, this is the best day ever. And it sucked when we started type thing. So Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's another thing is that practice. And I know we're getting off track and I have a, a million more questions for you, but that practice though, of recognizing the gratitudes, you know, once you start doing it, you get better and better at it. And what that does though, is it's not just that you know, this idea of, of you're putting out into the universe, the positive and you're bringing it back, which I think is true, but also you're getting better at identifying on a regular basis, the small and the big things that, um, are, are great things that just makes you so much more, it makes you relish life and really enjoy it and not, not just take things for granted all the time. So. And Kiki, okay. Well, Kiki, I think, I think one of the things that you're sort of spreading around is, is being present yeah. and, you know, we're all rushing from here to here to here to here to there to wherever. And you're not going to find things to be grateful for if you're not present. You know, if you go for a walk outside and yeah, you know, stay here. Cynthia, I don't know what it's like where you are, but it's 98,000 degrees outside. So, you know, it's very easy to just rush on to the next place. But yeah, maybe there is a nice breeze or maybe there is something. There's flowers, there's whatever that you can notice. And as long as you're present and noticing that, and not just running around like a crazy person, then it's about being present and you can actually be grateful even though outside it's 110. And riffing on both of you, the other piece to it, and it's like, I'm glad you guys are mentioning how it's an increased awareness is that if you're in one of the, you know, angry, sad, pissed off, grieving, whatever moods, it's really hard to go from that to joy. That's just too big of a leap. So gratitudes are a nice way to get some relief. You know, so if you're mm -hmm. angry, okay, well, what are you grateful for? I'm not grateful for anything. Okay, well, at least the world's not ending in this moment. Well, yes, that's true. I'm grateful for that. You know, and then you can ease your way up the gratitude chain to go to the higher emotions. But you doesn't, right. you don't have to do that crazy jump. Gratitudes can just give you relief from a crummy, from a um, more heavier emotion and take you back up to the higher ones. This is actually getting me really excited for our session because I'm realizing how much more we have. To I mean, I knew this was going to happen, but I'm realizing how much more, like we're not touching on anything that we're covering, in this session, but it's all, it all dovetails nicely into that. So that's very, very cool. Um, okay. So what have you tried in the past to bring balance to your life that didn't work? What, and what did you learn from it? So have you, have you tried to incorporate something that you were like, you know what, I hear that, I hear that this might work or this might be something that, you know, I think will bring more balance to me. And it just didn't fly for whatever reason. I can answer that. Okay. Um, for me, I did do with meditation and stuff. I, when I, I was in a dark phase of my life and when I was coming out, I did meditate a ton. And now med I used to meditate a half hour a day, an hour a day. I was really in it because I was clearing stuff out. And now I found much shorter ways to do it. So like a, a half hour, hour meditation does not work for me at all now. And so mm -hmm. I'm more on speed. 
but because I spent time, I, I know how to access that feeling. And for me, the going to joy has been a shortcut, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I don't sit in a dark room and, and do anything anymore like that. So you I, for a while, I tried to, um, and I might pick it up again at some point. It wasn't really, I may not have given it as much of a chance as I should have, but I was reading affirmations every morning. I wrote some affirmations and I would read them every morning. And after a while, I found that it became sort of just wrote that I was just reading them yeah. to read them. And I know there is a theory that if you read them, that eventually it sort of sinks in or has an impact. But after a while, I was like, I'm reading this over and over and over and over and over again. And and I knew I wasn't paying attention because even though I had read it so many mm -hmm. times, I couldn't tell you what any of them are. I did it for like three weeks, the same ones, like five, over and over yeah. and over again. And it just it didn't work. So, you know, instead of putting my pressure, pressure on myself to do it and actually do it, I don't want to say do it well, but be over into here. it, I stopped yeah. doing it. Yeah, I stopped doing it. So, and it hasn't really made a difference, but I may pick it back up again. But that was something that I tried that just didn't. Well, and you know, Scott, I hear you. And I'm like saying, well, I don't meditate anymore long time, but I spent a half hour now periodically imagineering my future. And so it's like taking the break from life and saying, okay, where do I want to go? What's it look like? How does it feel when I get there? When I'm this New York seller, best selling author, author, and, you know, presidents begged me to come on for the State of the Union address and, you know, crazy stuff. That's just fun to play with that. I'm quite an imagineering where perhaps it could actually be a meditation, but I'm just giving it a different label with a whole different flavor so, to avoid the get bored type thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I think is interesting about meditation too, is that what most people think of is that you're literally sitting in a dark room in a corner with your legs crossed, your hands, you know, palms facing up and that's what you're doing. But I, I really think that it's more just, clearing your mind it's just getting out of i mean kiki i think cynthia and you might have been there too when we went to the tapping session oh, yeah, yeah. We were. Oh, yeah. um great ideas or at I mmc or whatever <laughs> kind of goofy but the whole idea is it just it's so almost so goofy and odd that it gets you out of your head you can't help but not be in your head when you're more or less very lightly smacking yourself in the face <laughs> over and over well and you know that's like what improv for me you know, uh -huh. I go to these improv classes and I can't, you can't think when you're doing improv properly. And so it's like leaving my brain behind so I can just respond to the craziness. And it's like a three hour meditation, but it's not a meditation. It's, you know, fun and everything else. Um, but similar to your tapping, it's, it's a different way of clearing out. Well, that actually, that, right. that leads me to another question, which I had, you know, for later. And that is, <laughs> are there, are there any other, are there new skills or are there new habits that you would like to take on that you'd like to try that you haven't yet, that you think will improve your lives um, and, and make you more productive? Well, improv has been huge That's for not, me. That's not a fair question, Keith. <laughs> Unfair. I can answer it. You can just think a minute. Um, improv has been huge for me. And now that I'm doing shows, amateur shows, it really, um, it's really um, spiced up my life. And then I also took on belly dancing and um, I'm dodging those shows. So I'm not quite ready to go out and do that. But I have found that when I speak every once in a while, an undulation comes in by accident. And <laughs> So, street life interesting. There's, so there's another reason to come to our session is what you're saying. Yeah, you might see a little shimmy if you're lucky. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because, um, you know, we and we talk a lot about the, the different types of reports that come out about neuroscience and everything. And, and the one thing that seems pretty consistent, no matter what you're looking at, is as you're trying to learn new things, and it's actually stepping outside of your comfort zone and trying, trying to take on new skills, whether you're good at them or not, um, if, especially if they're tough for you, you are doing something that not only um, can bring you more happiness, but also can improve your intelligence, can actually improve your cognitive ability, your ability to learn more. And so- Boosting my creativity is what I've noticed. Oh, that's amazing. And you know, I wanna try, I wanna go into doing the improv stuff. Scott, you've had a chance. You've had a chance to think about this. Do you, are there any new skills, new things that you wanna learn that-, that um, uh 
I mean, at this point, there's really not. I mean, I feel like I'm far from done going where I need. To, I'm, I'm far from where I want to get yeah. to. But there have been some pretty, you know, Kiki, you and I talk and hang out all the time. So you've seen some of this change. I feel like there's been quite a bit of change over the last few years. Um, so for now, I'm kind of cool where I am, knowing that I'm still striving and moving forward. But there's nothing that's like the top tip of my tongue. It's like, wow, I really want to do this or I really want to do that. Because I've been trying to do more and more. And so I'm good for right so now. So you guys, I, I tried to take on uh, juggling and not the the... Not the figurative kind that we do all the time um, with our lives and everything else, but um, actual juggling, like juggling balls, really. And um, I can't stand in one spot and juggle yet. Um, and I'm not really consistent with it. And I could run into things and it's probably quite dangerous for me to be anywhere near traffic at attempting it. My goal was to get to the point where I could juggle in sand on a beach. I just had this vision in my head that I'm like juggling and anyone who knows me like, Oh God, I don't know. Like most of my life, maybe, and especially like, you know, four years ago, five years ago, uh, this like this concept of me being on a beach in the first place. I'm extremely pale. I burn. I'm not. I was never a beach person, you know. So I'm gonna so put this, you in a bikini too. Yeah. So put me in a bikini too on a beach and juggling was just like crazy. You might as well say that I'm riding a wild unicorn that I found, you know, flying by my house one day. And um, this is something I want to make happen. Like I want to make this happen. I don't know that it makes me more productive, but I do think that it brings joy to my life. So. Well, you've been getting into cooking too, Kiki. That's true. I've taken on a lot of things. There are things that have worked for me and things that haven't. Um, uh, Becoming a Girl Scout co-leader for my my daughter's troop, big fail. Like, uh, (laughs) (laughs) they liked me. I liked them. I like the kids very, very much. Um, But like, it turns out that that is not, that's, that's not something that I want to continue moving, moving on with. But that doesn't mean it was a big fail. It just means you found something you didn't enjoy. Yeah. It wasn't a fail. If they liked you, you liked them, then it was a success in its own way. I was way. the favorite. I was, the, but I shouldn't say that because this is. <laughs> but that's okay. It's okay. According, all uh, Girl Scout leaders, please listen to this recording. Yes, yes. Attention, Girl Scout leaders. But apparently, I was the favorite. So you know, I guess it wasn't a total fail. Well, that's because you sent out a survey monkey at the end. <laughs> and it, Tell your favorite <laughs> ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, no one's getting ice cream till you tell me who's your favorite. Yeah, no, no. It, uh, but, but you know, taking on the cooking and different things like that, definitely running and that kind of stuff. Um, the motivation to pick up the skill, uh, Team Sliceworks, was that I actually read in this really awesome book um, by Michael Gelb um, about ha- this connection between certain skills and um, increasing your cognitive ability, which is a big thing for me. Like I'm trying to get better and stronger as I get older. And, um, and there's actually like, because you're having to navigate different uh, balls in space and all of this stuff, and your, your mind is working on a number of different problems that are presented when you juggle, it actually does uh, help you more than doing things like crossword puzzles or, you know, word searches and that kind of thing. So there, there's an, there's a, there's a reason, but it's also because I want to be in a bathing suit on a beach and like know how to juggle. I just think it'd be cool. And it's a great party trick. So, you know, like to be able to do that, if things get really, really bad, maybe I can juggle on the side of the road and like people you know, toss me coins or something. We could do a group cruise with Ass and Chat and go down to some beach and all your association supporters come to see you in that bikini, swinging those things around. Yes. Yes. So, okay. That's right up. I love that idea. I love that idea. (laughs) I think, what do you guys think? Do you think that we should do something like that? I think that that'd be awesome. Um, What are your top three productivity killers? What are the top three things that cause you to be less productive? I think my biggest one is probably multitasking way too much and trying to accomplish a million things all at the same time. Um, and so that's, I guess that's more of a, a doing thing. I would say the other thing is, and I may not get the three, these are off the top of my head, but 
email is a total productivity killer. I have, you know, that's email is my squirrel. It, the email pings and I'm there and I'm doing that. And then the email pings again, I'm doing that. The email pings again. And I know I've read all the studies. And I, I've heard everybody yell at everybody about turn off your alert, turn off your alert, turn off your alerts. And I just, I'm not there. I, I just, for whatever reason, that's my addiction and I'm there all the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, those are probably my two things and, and I'll think of a third whilst you guys say yours, but I think those are probably the two just trying to do too much all at the same time. And then email just pinging at me all day. How about you, Sin? Um, for me, one thing is that I get too many ideas and the imaginarian is good in the sense it's got me thinking more future focus and wilder, but I find that with all the stuff I'm doing, ideas just pour from me. And so that can be distracting because sometimes the rabbit holes that I will go down. Um, I think the second thing that gets in messes with my productivity is getting seduced by things that are irrelevant. And that's mm -hmm. sort of similar but different. I mean, as I focused on the joy stuff, I've gotten to do I need to do this because I want time for my pleasure and my joy and trying to identify what are the things that are busy work, but they're not necessarily productive work. And so those things still trip me up a bit. Um, the third thing would have to be, I think, a lot of the stuff that's going on in Facebook, I find has been impacting me a bit. Mm -hmm. And the different, you know, all the horrible things that have happened and all the articles and all that. And I've had to take breaks periodically from it now because it was really impacting my productivity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hear you there. And I mean, especially with, with the work that I do, I end up, I end up falling into it. Even if I try to avoid it, I, mm -hmm. I end up falling into it too. And I think that, um, you know, for me, I, I, it's that prioritizing, like I have to drill into exactly what is the most important thing that I have to do. Um, I seriously, like if I try to uh, attempt like going about my day and I haven't figured out what the top two, three things are that I need to get done that day, I'm a goner. I'm in big trouble because everything will end up, it'll be like email will be directing what I do. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I've been using, to address that, I've been using uh, Evernote where I like list out like my three, my top three things that I've got to get done. And there's a ton. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like there's also the to-do list after that, but I actually list like three priorities and those are the things. And so everything else, no matter how important it is, no matter if it has to get done by the end of the day, no matter what, they fall below those top three things. And I just have to make sure that whatever I'm doing chips away or knocks those out first, first and foremost. But um, yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. I also have um, my dogs that come up and say, mommy, we need to go out. You need to be in the sunshine now. Well, they're actually saying they have to go potty, but I don't want to say that. But so it can be <laughs> that forced unexpected break. And yet sometimes those are really good just to go outside, sit in the sunshine for a few minutes you know, reconnect with nature and then come back in. Yeah. So they're productivity yeah. inhibitors and boosters at the same time. I think one of the other productive things that hinder my productivity is setting boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and, and I think this, we all do sort of the same thing as consultants. And so you've got multiple clients chipping away at you and everything else, but it's not any different when you work in an office, when you've got multiple colleagues and coworkers chipping away at you and asking for things. And so, you know, you've got to set those boundaries and you've got to set aside the time for yourself to do what you need to do. Because if you don't, um, I mean, yeah, I know this is harder with your dog, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, train those dogs. You've got between 1 and 115. That's when you get to go out because I got work yeah. to do, you know. But seriously, I mean, between my kids and between work and my kids are older now, but, you know, they need stuff. And it's being OK with saying, look, I know you need coworker, colleague, spouse child whatever i know you need but look i got to do what i got to do right now so you got to do this later and if you're not willing to set up those boundaries and set those schedules then you're just running around like you know like a chicken with your head cut off waiting for somebody else to kind of run you off and then that's when the stress i find that's when the stress really amps up while well, i'm sitting at my computer working and i feel the pressure that somebody needs something for me and i'm like how am i trying to do this how am i trying to do that when 
as a kid upstairs doing whatever they're doing, trying to get your attention or not, or calling on the phone. And so those boundaries are important to set. And I think that's one of the hardest things to do is people you care about, people you love, people that are counting on you and that you trust and have a relationship with. It's sometimes you got to shut them down. You got to say, this is what I got to do. Yeah. I work with my leaders a lot on this too, because to go to that martyr space. And uh, one of the things I found that's really effective for them is getting good at doing recommendations because a lot of times as people who get stuff done, we get asked to do more stuff. This is a little different than the kids type thing, Scott, but you know, the little, sure. Hey, can you volunteer to do this? Hey, can you help do that? You know, cause I know you'll do stuff. If you want to get stuff done, ask a busy person. Right. And so one of the things like I find really, really good or really um, helpful is to get really good at recommending other people, you know, in the old sweet, sour, sweet, Thank you for asking. I'm sorry. I don't have capacity. However, I want to recommend Kiki. She's brilliant at this. <laughs> and then like, oh, thanks. <laughs> no, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but being okay with that because it's some of us get so consumed with being the go-to person that we mm -hmm. like being overwhelmed. And again, it's like another addictive thing I see with folks that they get their identity mm -hmm. from being overwhelmed. So when we can start saying, well, you could have given this to George in the office. He's not, he's, he's leaving at five with no problem. Why aren't you sharing the workload or delegating? Well, because they asked me to do it. Yes. And, you know, how can we mm. get others involved? Yes. And, oh, that improv stuff is really kicking yeah. in, Sen. Okay. Sorry. All right. So, so this is actually kind of a tough question I'm about to ask, and I'm not sure exactly... I'm not sure I haven't answered the best way possible yet myself. So here we go. But who are your role models or your mentors in achieving a more balanced, productive life? So, and this can be personal or professional, but um, who are they? Who are your role models? Uh, that's, that's the primary question. And they, they have a bunch of questions following them up, but do you have, do you have any right? right out of the gate who are they so for me you wouldn't know who this person is but i have a couple of friends where we are dedicated together to holding each other accountable for having more pleasurable lives to, mm -hmm. to live in it with the joy and as i dug into joy more they came out like oh my god i want this too and so we actually go through and we review like days, what's going on and might do a midday check-in. Um, and that has been a huge help to see. And it's very, sort of like a mastermind group, very real, very honest. You know, some of the conversations you and I have, Kiki, you know, yeah. what's going on? How are we handling it so that we can support each other in our quest to be as effective as possible and as joyful as possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we work on that actively. I feel, well, I feel like all three, like, I feel that we all three really work on it actively, but, you know, find those people. I think for me, I, I have been on the lookout for people who are not just successful in some sort of like through like status or money or anything like that, but are, are effectively living their lives in a, in a way, in a fashion in which I think they're really sucking the joy out of life and, and giving it their all. And, and, and I, I want to do that. Like my goal, of course, I want to be successful and, and with all of the things that go along with what that means, but, but to live a good life, just a solid good life, whether you're in a tent or a mansion, you know? So how about you, Scott, do you have, do you have mentors or role models, people that stick out that, that you think, yeah, I mean, I mean, I wish I had more mentors. I think one of the things that I've struggled with, and I think it's, you know, it's kind of cool because Cynthia, you and I have known each other for a while and, and Kiki, you and I have actually known each other longer, but, you know, I didn't really know these types of things about you guys until recently, you know, and so it's sort of you, you discover it and um, it's not easy to find I don't, I hate, I sort of hate the term like-minded people, right? But it's not easy. Like you don't walk around at conferences and things like that going, I meditate and do a gratitude journal too, <laughs> you know? It, it just is not when you're walking around at ASA annual. They don't have those ribbons, right? They don't have those at the ribbon bar. Right. <laughs> it's not the conversation you have. Oh, no. So I really, right? you know, besides some people that I've known for a while that I'm just sort of learning these types of things about, 
I don't have that many people. I don't know. I sort of blame it on a geographical thing. Living I live, it's, I don't know. I mean, definitely there's lots of people that go to yoga and because it's kind of cool and it's healthy to go to a yoga studio, it's not necessarily a mind frame. It's a, I can be really flexible and stay in shape and go to yoga because it's cool and it's nice to do mm-hmm. whatever. Um, so in that sense, no, but I mean, I do a lot of reading and I don't know. Um, Cynthia, I can't remember if you had told me you read it. I know you haven't read it yet, but Hal Elrod wrote a book called The The Miracle Morning. And he now has this huge community. I mean, what what he overcame is pretty unbelievable. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it, but it's a short book. It's easy to read. He's got a whole Facebook community. And it's just people supporting each other. And the funny thing is that I go on and like people I didn't even realize, like people that I'm friends with in life, that I'm friends with on Facebook, they're commenting and they're writing things or whatever. I'm like, oh, wow, I never even knew that about that person. So, you know, just kind of finding those like-minded people is really where I'm, I'm still looking right now. I'm still trying to find people like that. So I don't really think I have a mentor. A lot of it, I'm getting um, more from reading things and, and articles and books and things like that than necessarily from people right now. Yeah. I think finding them on social media is a lot easier, Scott, um, because of the you're talking about it, you know, so you can get a feel for it. What I found is the more I've leaned into this and I blog about it, so it makes a little difference too. Um, but just what I find is I'm like walking around happier and people mm-hmm. are like, what are you drinking? And then we get into conversations and stuff or why are you so happy all day? I saw you in the morning. You're still happy, which sounds simple, you know, and almost silly. Yeah. So, so this yeah. actually, this is a question. So do you see, I, I, think I know the answer, but, but bear with me. Do you see happiness and productivity as being connected? And if so, how or why? I mean, I personally think it is. Um, I think if you're happier, um, you're going to be that much more energetic. You're going to be that much more likely to give your all um you're going to be that much more likely to be open to new ideas and to be creative and that all goes into being more productive you know it's not like if you come into the office and it's like oh all right i'm just gonna say it oh crap i i gotta do this you're not gonna give it your all you're not gonna want to do it you're gonna crank through it so that it gets done and maybe you're not happy with the work maybe you're not happy with life whatever it is it's so you know, there's going to be, we all have things we don't want to do. Right. But if you come into it where you're happier about all of the other things in your life or as many of them as you can, you know, at least your glass is a little bit more than half full as opposed to almost totally empty, you're just going to do a better job and you're going to be that more productive. So I think it's definitely tied together. It just gives you this, I don't even know, you know, this pep in your step that you wouldn't have if you're just walking around grumpy. Yeah. Yeah. How about you guys over here on the side? As- uh, do you see productivity and happiness as being connected? Do you see them as one leading to the other? I definitely do. I, I have have seen that the happier I am and the more focused, it really comes down to like priorities for me and like making sure that I do these things that help me to have the energy that I need so that I'm working at the things that are the most important in my life. And I mean, that is that's being productive and that's not being productive in a meaningless sort of way, but in a meaningful way where you're working at the things that matter the most to you. And so at the end of the day, when you're going to bed, you know, you're feeling like you have been successful at least at, at the things that you have, you have chosen to be those things that, that matter the most to you. And so um, with that said, are there apps? I mean, let's go to the tech side of it. Um, are there? You don't apps? want my answer. Oh, did I jump over? No, no. I want your answer. I totally yes. want your answer. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I want your answer. <laughs> no, I was going to agree with both of you actually. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, yeah, give us a short answer. I just wanted to say, you know, that she missed me. Um, <laughs> When I, when I get into my joy space, I get into the flow and life becomes much easier. And then when I'm working yeah. with teams, I find it, I get like jolly and have sort of fun being annoyingly positive. And that's like my new, that's my new thing when I'm going in and working with teams, whether it's volunteer or clients or whomever, I just become totally positive and I see the good in everything. And it's, 
It's an exercise. It's training my mind to look for it. So when you do the stuff, Scott, that you're like, uh, it's like, well, how can I find the joy in this? Why does this matter? How is this taking me to my stuff that I want to accomplish in my life? Like Kiki says, and you know, it's, it becomes sort of funny to be so positive and then it becomes yeah. cool to do it. You feel good about it too, but so well, that's been my new little up- hobby. I end up talking to my mom on the phone or something and, and she'll say something like, uh, oh, well, I know I shouldn't mention this to you because you're going to just tell me to look at the positive side of things. And I'm like, I like that that's me. Like, I like that she's, I like, even if she's saying it in a negative way, I'll take it. Like, I'll take that. I want it. I want that to be my problem. Like, I want that. That's a high class problem to have that the people know when they're talking to me that I'm going to look for the positive. Cause that hasn't always been me. You know, I was the black wearing drama geek that was like focused on like, you know, what's the point? You know, I like, I get, I was Eeyore, right. I could always, uh, thanks for, thanks for noticing me. You know, like, I mean, that's so, so I like that. That's where things have gone. Like that's a good direction. We're moving. It's a trajectory is good. Um, so, <laughs> as I, so technology wise, Technology wise. Um, and I don't want to cover Scott. I'm just going to say, like, I don't want to cover everything that we're going to like any of the apps we're going to talk about necessarily in our, in our session, but on the practical side of things, how are you addressing, uh, being more productive using apps and technology? What are some of the practices that you're putting in place? And this is for everyone who's, who's watching or listening live. Uh, to uh, share with us, you know, what, what's working for you. And before you guys say it, Evernote, okay, I know Evernote, but, um, but like, what are some of the things, some of the apps that you're maybe using to help you to be more productive? Well, I mean, I can give a really, 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 and this is not going to be a shocker to anyone, um, because it's been around since basically the beginning of time. I use my calendar. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I block out you know, I block out time to meditate. I block out time to go to the gym. I mean, if you looked at my calendar, you'd laugh because I've got like a week of workout schedule. Yeah. It just literally says from this time to this time, go for a run. It says from this time to this time, go to the gym. It says whatever. So that way, you know, I know what I'm going to do. I know where I'm going to be. And it just, it, it makes me feel so much more productive and it makes, it makes me feel so much more in control because it's not, and I also know I'm going to get those types of things in because they're already scheduled. It's like those hard those things which are in many ways, yes, they're need to do, but they're kind of also nice to do. You know, if you miss a day at the gym, big deal. You're not going to die tomorrow if you miss a day at the gym. But, you know, to me, I need to exercise. I feel like I really need to exercise to feel like myself. So if I don't schedule it out, it's very, very easy to go, oh, I'll just send one more email. And now I'll just send two more emails. And now I'm going to make a phone call and I'm going to do something else. And then by the time you're done, there's no way, there's no time for you to do it. So you now I really, I really use my calendar and my task list. Those are the two, I know it sounds very, very basic, but those are two things that I rely on all the time. And if you wiped all the apps off my phone, those are the two things that would probably kill me the most. You could take Facebook, you could take LinkedIn, you could take all those things, the calendar and probably my phone book too, but calendar, phone book and task list without that, you know, I'd be done. <laughs> How about you, Sen? Um, I agree on the calendar, the part of it. For me, the, the productivity, I go back to, I'm so tied into my joy and my productivity. So for me, it's my alarm. You know, setting off those alarms to the day just to get me back into my space makes a huge difference. Um, so that's helped. I also, I'm still, I find that when I'm doing a lot of work, I still like having paper and pen. It's like it goes from my brain to my pen. I can't, I can type fast, but it doesn't do the same thing. So one of my productivity tips is I have um, a stack of blank yellow pads in my office so I can put one per topic and I, they don't get mixed up as well. Yeah, so. that's great. I love that. Okay, guys. So this is going to be, this is, I mean, we're near in the end. So I want to give you both a chance to say some final words about uh, this topic and maybe something like a, uh, a lesson or something that you want people to really take away from everything that we've talked about today um you know what would be one thing one takeaway one one thing that you want people to 
to think about when they think about everything that we've discussed with this chat today? I mean, I would say my biggest thing is as long as you're doing something to clear your mind, to make yourself feel better, whatever, then you're on the right track. It doesn't have to be, I mean, I talked to somebody at one point who was like, you know, I can't get into meditation. I can't do it. So they listen to like, um, they listen to a certain kind of music whenever they're in the car. It's got like not a lot of words. It's just a lot of rhythm and whatever. And that gives them the opportunity to just kind of clear their head. So again, as I was saying earlier, I think there's an idea that not sitting in a dark room, thing, totally quiet, totally brain dead, then you're not doing it right. I disagree. I mean, Cynthia, I think it's great that you say, you know, you're taking like two minutes here and two minutes there and, and whatever. And that's what it is. It's about taking the time out so that you realize that you can clear your mind so that you can be present. And there's no right. There's no wrong about it. Whatever works for you, go for it and give it a shot. And don't let anybody make you feel guilty or bad about that you're doing is not what's written in, you know, the Buddhist textbooks from 1885. And that's the way to do it because there's no right. There's no wrong. As long as you're doing something, you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you, Scott. And, um, it's like giving yourself permission to be in that relaxed space um, and how you frame it up. Like mindfulness, um, as much as I do it, it's not a great resonating word for me where joy I just like blossom over. And so for those listening, it's like figure out what is it that works for you? Mm-hmm. You know, if you just simply ask, am I joyful today? Am I joyful in this moment? And just that pause to say, am I or not, could be considered being very present and very, you know, mindful about your moments and stuff. So get creative in it and um, see what happens. And I think that's a huge thing. Well, okay. So this, this was an incredible chat and it was incredibly fun for me. And I hope it was for everyone who's watching and for everyone, uh, for both of you, Cynthia and Scott, um, thank you so much. Thanks to everyone uh, for joining us for this week's association chat. I want to thank Cynthia and Scott for lending us their time and expertise. And I do hope that if you're going to ASA annual, that you're going to make sure to make it to our session. We have resources, we have exercises. We've really made this session so that you're going to have a good time. You're going to learn a, a heap from it. And I promise if, if, uh, you make it to that session, you will walk away with one thing that you can use that could change your life. So make sure that you make it to the session. All right. Do you know any young association executives worthy of being named a Trends 2016 Young and Aspiring Association Professional? If so, you should consider nominating him or her uh, for this association, Trends Young and Aspiring Association Professional. Look for, uh, follow at Trends Tweets uh, for more information about that on Twitter. But uh, there is, this is the chance, this is your chance to nominate some of these young and aspiring uh, executives, association executives, and show some gratitude to them for being the fabu- fabulous people that they are. If you're in DC, I want you to stay on top of some of the fun educational and networking events that are produced in the area by wonderful volunteers like the Scott Oser right here. Um, there's a meetup group, the Association Networking Group Annex, and there's a happy hour that is on the books uh, coming up that you're going to want to check out. I'm going to put some, uh, some different links over here in the side for you guys to check out. And then if you want to share your ideas on future topics and speakers for association chat, then please do so. We have some really great chats that are coming up. Next week, we're going to be talking with association analytics about how to get the best ROI out of data analytics. Uh, The week after that, we're going to be talking with Tom Morrison about when Uber meets associations. So that's going to be a, a fantastic. Tom is, if you haven't, had a chance to talk with Tom, I I guarantee you you will be entertained. Um, There's going to be a live show, live association chat uh, from ASA Annual, and that's going to be on the 16th. And then the week after that, we're going to have JP Murray, who is talking about association leadership, what he knows for sure. And he has a really fantastic uh, ongoing like Facebook Live uh, thing that he does uh, from their Facebook page. If you go to uh, the Murray Company 
at M-O-E-R-Y on LinkedIn, you'll be able to see from their company page um, some past uh some past podcasts and video chats that they've done. Uh, really, really good stuff. I hope you've had a good time with this chat, that you have learned something that will help you now or in the future. And if you like it, if you like association chat, and I hope you do, then please consider sharing this with your colleagues and give us some love on social media. And as always, if you want to continue the discussion, you can join the Association Chat Facebook group for regular updates on upcoming topics and special guests. Have a great week, everyone, and we will see you next time.